Texas House has a new bill that will soften the state's strict voter ID law. <laughs> well, that's what happens when four federal courts say uh, it had uh, it had basically had racist intent. Mm -hmm. Republican Governor Greg Abbott called the measure an emergency item, urging lawmakers to quickly reach an agreement. Again, four courts have struck down the voter ID law. Republicans feared if they didn't pass it by the end of this session, Texas would have to have federal preclearance before changing election laws. Well, since 2011, uh, judges rule again twice that the original bill deliberately discriminated against minority voters. Senate Bill 5 is hoping to address these concerns. The House voted to allow a few more usable IDs at the ballot box. Also, Texans will be allowed to sign a declaration if they don't have a proper ID, and voters will be charged with a misdemeanor instead of a felony <laughs> for incorrectly signing an affidavit that shows they ha are having trouble getting an ID. Whether we agree with the, stat with the court's ruling or not, we're trying to uh, recognize that ruling and recognize the encouragement of the Fifth Circuit and bring uh, the statute uh, into a, a manner that hopefully the court will say good job. I'm hopeful that we're here not necessarily just to get out of court, but actually to create good policy. <laughs> Democrats say the changes are not good enough, saying they want Texas back on the list of states that need permission before changing election laws. The mod modified bill now sets the stage for what some are calling a showdown in the Texas Senate. Joining me now on the phone in Austin is Texas State Representative Helen Giddings out of Dallas. Representative Giddings, so, okay, it passed, but clearly uh, Abbott was scared to death, and he kept defending the previous law, and he kept getting a butt kick in federal court. Absolutely. We have been told no less than three times uh, that our voter... ID requirements in terms of, uh, of uh, identification, photo ID, are stricter than uh, almost any other state, and that they seem to be intentionally discriminatory. But yet this bill that we passed out of the House uh, did nothing to uh, ease that. And as a matter of fact, we, we did do two or three things that made the bill a little bit better uh, as it was presented to us from the Senate. But as of yesterday, last evening, the Senate has refused to concur in those amendments. For mm -hmm. instance, one of the amendments that I added was to allow a person to use an expired document that had been expired up to four years rather than two, which is a measure that the judge herself had put in during the, the interim. And then we changed uh, the third-degree felony in the House from two to ten years to a class uh, a misdemeanor which would carry a one-year sentence and it's my understanding that does not sit well with the Senate. Uh, so obviously they're making these changes. Do you believe that it will fly in court because I guarantee you there'll be a court challenge? Uh, I don't think this will pass a muster of the courts at all and uh, this is just a half-hearted uh, effort on our part to get past the judge because the judge has given us through this session to present something that was acceptable, and I, I cannot see how this will be acceptable uh, at all. I mean, you can use your concealed weapon uh, license, of course, to uh, as photo ID, but you still cannot use your student ID. Wow. And we know in this country that only about 25% uh, of African Americans have uh, the kind of photo ID that would be acceptable under this law. And uh, from the time we passed this law in 2011, over 700,000 otherwise eligible uh, Texans lost their right to vote. All right, Representative Giddings, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Shannon, again, I keep saying that. I don't know how many more times Republicans will keep trying to stop folks from voting. You know, I can't even respond to it in that manner. Like I said before, I live in Baltimore. There hasn't been a Republican elected in 70 years, and we still have the same issues. The city's all Democrat run. Mostly black folk. Same issues. So, Which issues? Voter so, ID? Yes. You, I'm, and I'm not kidding. So to me, it, that, again, is not just a partisan thing. It's kind of a little bit more out there than people seem to realize. No, actually, the, oh, the, the voter ID laws that have been passed have been run by Republican legislatures. Mostly. I mean, I'm talking about Alabama, Mississippi, Iowa, North Carolina, Texas. I mean, we can go down the line. I mean, hell, they even, they even changed the law in Maine. Uh, a same day registration, where, and nobody asked for the law to be changed, and then the voters went back and put it on the ballot and changed it back. 
I can't speak to all of that. I can just speak to Maryland, because that's where I am. And in Baltimore, there are issues that are more than just statewide. I mean, in, in our cities, we're having issues on both sides. Yeah, no, but even what if is Beyond Maryland, 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 Maryland is no a national initiative for the party itself, the, the Republican Party supports suppressing voters, particularly voters of color. And so beyond Maryland, it is almost a national initiative of the party itself. It's representative of the Absolutely. party. Absolutely. Listen, Hogan voted against the uh, felon. Uh, he tried to, he vetoed. He tried to veto the felon restoration, and it was the Maryland legislature that overrode him. This fight around voter ID, in Texas, they're going to lose it again in the courts because they did the same nutty thing. They violated the you know, Arlington Heights principles again regarding passing this as emergency legislation. They have not gone to solve the voter ID question, and they did not respond to the court's directive to deal with public education and making sure that people know what ID they need to have, how to get it, and getting the assistance that the state owes them. A peaceful protest it, well, turned deadly. A 27-year-old black man was electric. shot and killed by Baton Rouge police. His hands are in the air and you still get shot by the cops. Oh my God, please don't tell me he's dead. We're not going to let hate define us. Race is a big part of this. If truly all lives matter, then all lives need to matter equally. What we require is action. What we require is accountability. We understand that black lives do matter. <laughs> we will keep focus on this issue. News One Now, every weekday morning at 7 on TV One.